A one out of five. Oh my god. It's basically a giant foxhole slash cult. Closed book 90 minutes take home exam. These are things that you don't want to hear over and over and over and over again. Hey, and welcome back. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Preston. I've been working as a professional recruiter in the technology industry. And in this video, we're gonna take a deep dive in the company Tesla and really de decide at the end whether or not you should actually work there. And to do this, we're gonna first start off by really taking a quick gander at the job page just to see how well they're really portraying the whole opportunity and getting people excited and jazzed about working there. And then we're gonna hop into our friends at Glassdoor just to see from real employees and past employees how actually it is working there. If if you're excited, don't forget to like, subscribe, click that bell, really means a lot. So before we get started, uh, to kick off on the job page analysis, we wanna be able to kind of go through the different criteria that we have in judging high level on how well a company is doing, how much effort, how much resources they're putting in to their job page. These are the mission values, the remote work, diversity, visuals, benefits, perks, ease of search, and job description. Like, are they doing anything unique? So let's dive in. So I just got here at tesla.com slash careers, already seeing a pretty awesome dynamic video really gives you a lot of energy of some of their gigafactories snapshots of the computers different members of the team really really cool I, I definitely like to see job pages starting out with really strong visual elements and Tesla is doing that as expected good job Elon now scrolling down uh, we see something that says search by rule or key word uh, solve the next generation of engineering manufacturing operational challenges as we work to secure a clean energy future so here I suspect that you know if you're coming in here you're already excited about about working there and you have a specific job in mind, you can just quickly type in, you can kind of skip everything and just go straight to the job page to see open jobs if applicable. Now, if you weren't interested and you're just kind of curious or you know you just heard about the Tesla for the first time, you want to scroll down, let's see what else we can find. Feature jobs, really, really cool. So we have jobs across manufacturing and cell team and even autopilot AI, apply cutting edge research to advance a future of full self-driving, developing some of the world's most sophisticated decision-making systems. That sounds pretty awesome. The cell team, vertically integrated cell team works to solve the next generation of battery challenges. So I think these are like specific hot jobs that they are highlighting. I'm not sure if this changes on a week to week, month, quarter, or year basis, but for some reason they are actually really driving traffic to these specific distinct cohort of jobs. Working at Tesla, it doesn't matter where you come from, where you want to, where you went to school or what industry you're in. If you've done exceptional work, join us to rethink the future of sustainable energy and manufacturing. And here again is another link of jobs with a really cool picture of someone who's clearly happy working at Tesla. So, so far, haven't really seen too much about their mission and vision. We've seen definitely like a lot of great visuals and photographs. We have to give them um, a point there. Nothing yet about benefits and perks uh, or the job description or even any remote uh, mentioning of diversity. So we keep scrolling down. We have a uh, little section for student opportunities. So Tesla interns tackle hands-on projects and design challenges, constantly upending conventions and pushing boundaries. Students may also apply for Tesla Start, an immersive 12-week capstone program where undergraduates develop technical expertise. I think if I were to go back in time to when I was a student and looking for internships, I think this would be like a really, really cool place. Again, you have like a really nice picture of a diverse group of students here, um, jumping up in the air and smiling and really amped about what they're working on. I think that's really, really cool. And then here's another direct link to viewing internships. You scroll down, our communities refuse to do things the way they've always been done, motivated by a collective commitment to a sustainable future. We work to build an inclusive environment in which everyone, regardless of gender, race, religion, age, or background, can succeed. So you can be part of a very inclusive community. You can also feel good about the work that you're doing instead of making really great looking cars and batteries. Life at Tesla, this is the first inkling that we're getting about you know, what the culture is like. Maybe perhaps they can expand more on the mission and vision. We replaced corporate hierarchy and bureaucratic conventions with open communications and a collaborative working environment. By promoting a safe and an innovative and inclusive culture, anyone with the talent, energy, and focus to solve hard problems has a seat at that table. Uh, still, we'd love to kind of hear more about the actual mission and vision and value. I know that on the surface, they're all about making cars, but do they have a greater vision? And are they really doing a good job in conveying that on the job page, which is the main destination for prospective talent, aside from you know people coming in through recruiters or agencies like us. Benefits and more. We provide employees and their family benefits like medical, dental, and vision, 401k, and generous pay time off from day one with flexible scheduling, 
fitness resources and stock benefits for everyone. We invest in team members to help them do their best. So I like medical, dental, vision. They don't really elaborate on that. Uh, they mentioned 401k, does it have 401k matching? I have no idea. And generous pay time off. I think fitness resources is really, really cool. Although a lot of companies offer that. Flexible scheduling, stock benefits. I mean, overall it sounds really great and they're just kind of backing everything up. Subheadings by like these all really cool dynamic uh, pictures and here we have I believe a Tesla Y uh, with a family who's obviously clearly happy using their car and then you have another section get involved so we offer a number of opportunities to find your community Tesla with employee resource groups ERGs creating spaces to connect over shared interests and goals they support a diverse inclusive workplace so this is as close as I get so far in talking about diversity I, I wish that they had an additional point for diversity to expand on that or maybe a sub link to like other pages that we've seen from other companies where we can kind of go to another sub page and learn about their employees resource groups or diversity we'll see maybe we'll see more later feels like to me we're seeing a bare minimum of broad strokes of like some of the main components i want to see but it'd be nice to have like a deeper dive for a better first impression again a lot of uh, great photographs here and here we get another great photograph of a lot of their team members clearly happy and celebrating working at tesla yay join us accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy Ooh, this is like the first flavor that we get for mission and vision so again I'm sure that they do a greater great job in painting their mission and values on the home page or other pages but in the specific job page not really doing that well for mission and values I got to give it zero they don't mention remote works so got to give that zero I mean they mention diversity through their employee resource group barely so maybe just give that a one but I'm feeling really generous benefits and perks again maybe give that a one but that's a very generous one because they don't go into detail on the types of benefits and perks that they offer Ease of search, we had multiple uh, links uh, directly to go to their open jobs. So we had to give them a point there. Job description, is it unique? Does it have X factor? Let's check it out. So I'm gonna click on view jobs here. On a high level, they're hiring a lot of different positions across a lot of different categories across a lot of different locations. So categories, if you're curious about working at Tesla, they're hiring everything from autopilot to charging, construction, design, energy, engineering, all the way to finance, HR, manufacturing, supply chain, vehicle services. If you're wondering where uh, they're hiring, let's see. Job type, they, oh, they also do a lot of different full-time, part-time interns, cool. Location, wow, so many different options. But if you just kind of scroll down to the right column here, I see California, Texas, Nevada, Florida, you got Mississippi, you got New Jersey, Washington, Pennsylvania, Nevada, California, remote uh, Texas, California here, Buffalo, New York. So it looks like most of these are domestic jobs. I don't really see a lot of international jobs. Um, New York, Texas, Illinois, California, Colorado. So I'm kind of curious if you scroll up here um, and you click location, what happens if you click Norway? Oh, wow, look at that. They actually have positions, a ton of positions at Norway. Not surprising because Norway is super in front in terms of you know adoption of electric vehicles and EVs in general. So what about maybe like Japan? Okay, cool. So these aren't just filler uh, links. Like every single one of these links have a job at Tesla. So if you're in the US or if you're around the world and you're open to remote or relocate, then check out jobs at Tesla. Very cool. So real quick, let's just take another couple minutes here um, and just clicking a random uh, job post just to see if what they're doing is like really, really interesting. So job category, why don't we go to ooh, design? Vehicular design exterior LA, California. Um, so scrolling down, it's super generic, no visuals. On the whole, it looks very typical in terms of the structure. So let's dive in, vehicle designer. Exterior LA. As an exterior designer in Tesla's LA Design Studio team, you'll be responsible for the exterior design development of future Teslas. Very cool. So again, high level overview of the job. Then it really kind of goes into the possible team that you're gonna own, the, where it's located, and then responsibilities, skills and qualifications, minimum of two years of experience, must understand the fundamentals of design engineering, high level of 2D. And then they end it with Tesla equal opportunity, which is very standard and very typical. So um, I did wanna note that again, when you are looking at all these jobs, they do have a good amount of remote jobs. So I think because of that, I definitely want to maybe give them a point there. But again, just context, I would love to have seen more explanation, more description of remote work at the job page instead of having to only see it at the specific jobs that I'm looking for. So because of that job description, 
not really that impressed about it, so I have to give it a zero. So out of seven points, I have to give Tesla on a high level, one, two, three, four, five out of seven, but that's very generous because I did give it a point on remote and diversity and even benefits, where if I wasn't feeling generous, it'd be more out of a two out of seven. Would love to see more information about the, the actual benefits, remote, and what diversity of Tesla actually means. This is, on a nutshell, a very high level snapshot of how Tesla as a company is marketing its job opportunities, its culture to the external world through their actual website. Now, let's go into Glassdoor and just to see what actual employees have to say about working at Tesla. All right, so here we are at Tesla's page here at Glassdoor. Overall, people have given it 3.7 out of five, which is pretty solid. It found over 5,300, over 6,732 reviews. So this is not a small data sample pool. It's pretty considerate. 3.7 out of five, I would say it's a little bit above average. Good job, Elon. 67% of employees who participated on this page with a rating or review would recommend working with Tesla for a friend, which is significantly pretty high. 82% approve of the CEO, Elon Musk, which is also pretty high. And then there's a picture of Elon Musk right there. So let's see what people are actually saying. So instead of sorting the most popular, a lot of them can be really old. I like to go to the most recent to see what recent hires uh, and recent reviews and ratings are actually saying. Let's just kind of go through uh, some of them together. Wow, this guy wrote a lot. So this guy gave it a one out of five. Oh my gosh. Great colleagues, but terrible management structure. They do not recommend it. Not a good business outlook and do not approve CEO. The employees that you go to battle with every day are amazing. Cool. But for the most part, it doesn't matter what division you need help from. They're all going to help you to the best of your ability, made some lifelong friends here and disappointing not seeing them every day. So all in the whole, that sounds pretty good. And you want to make sure that wherever you work, you can have an opportunity to develop really strong friends. Now there's an essay here. It's basically a giant foxhole slash cult. They expect you to meet insanely high targets every year. Very stressful. You will get marked off track parentheses, not completing your job and that required pace, end parentheses, if you don't hit your target every week. This is insane to me because you can be the top salesman or saleswoman exceeding your quarterly target by an outrageous amount yet still not be good enough. Oof, that cannot be good for morale, long-term sustainability, or just overall just really good retention. They continue to remove bonuses, lower the pay scale, and on top of that, remove valuable resources to get the job done right so you don't really get the right support and resources to perform well. Every advisor is dealing with 500 plus clients and there's just not enough time in the day to get everything completed. It really comes down to the amount of micromanaging. That's not good. The store managers 90% of the time do not know what is going on and just relay messages onto their team from regional to national managers with little to no information. It wouldn't be that big of a deal, but these policies, procedures change weekly, sometimes quicker, so you cannot keep up. Oof. So fast paced, a lot of things changing, no amp warning, micromanaging, stress, that sounds pretty rough. Advice to management. You want to start to focus on employee experience, which in turn would directly turn into a better customer experience. A huge portion of employees are very unhappy, which will always make for a negative customer experience. But don't you think that if the employees are happy to come to work every day, that more of the customers have a positive experience? I think this is common sense. Like if you make your employees happy, in turn, they'll do a better job. If they do a better job, your products and services will be better to make the customers happy. If the employees are not happy, customers are not gonna be happy. Like that totally makes sense. So again, this is the first review that we read, but wow, coming in strong at a one out of five. Next, three out of five mixed bag. He or she would recommend uh, this person was a staff process engineer decent business outlook. They like working at leading edge technology with lots of pure talent, but severely underpaid and equity packages no longer incentive. Come on, Elon, if you're gonna raise so much money, if your company's gonna become a leader in its industry, make sure you try to pay your team. The fact that someone's saying they're severely underpaid, that's not good. And then they're not just the cash, but like their equity packages are no longer incentive. Short-term, long-term incentives are subpar. That is a big weakness, red flag, and that could be a huge opportunity for people just to kind of jump ship uh, and not stay long-term. So that's not really, really good at all. Okay, we got our first really positive comment. Four out of five, amazing company, corporate machine. The pros, incredible product obviously, forefront of the industry, generous with RSU grants. Very cool. So what the person before says, equity package no longer incentive, but this person says, who's a Tesla advisor, that RSU grants make sense. Cons, very slow internal growth. 
managers focuses on employee retention through false promises. Not good. You never want to lie or give a, a fake carrot on the stick to your employees because if that gets caught on really, really quickly, people are just going to leave or write scathing reviews about it online, which is exactly what I'm reading here. Only base pay, no bonus structure or commission. And this is a Tesla advisor in Miami, Florida. So I don't know if the base pay is market competitive or if it's above or sub, but he also mentioned that there's no bonus or commission. But I really, really do not like to see this whole false promise thing. The slow internal growth can't be really good for morale, even though the product is very good. Automation engineering technician in Nevada. Pay is really good at Tesla, enough to be able to take one position lower than what you're used to in order to learn the equipment and give yourself some breathing room, then apply for the higher position maybe six to 12 months later. So this person's saying that pay is really good. Advice to management. Learn more machine design and integration. Don't have interns design full machines or people without a background in it. That would just kind of uh, really give the wrong impression or just really get people with actual technical specialized degrees or really rub them the wrong way if you get inexperienced or interns to do the job for you. Also, experienced people should be on nights and inexperienced people on days where they'll have more support. All right, great career starter by production associate. Pros, if you've been applying for jobs at tech companies and haven't gotten any offers, this could be a good starting point to get your foot in the door. I agree, having Tesla on your resume can open up many doors in the tech industry. If you're a hard worker and you work six to seven days like I do, you can make eight to 10,000 a month if you do a lot of time and double time. That's pretty legit. Work is relatively easy, but mostly labor. If you exercise, play sports, you'll be fine. And after six months, you can apply for another position. So I guess if you're production, associate or you're applying to be one of Tesla, make sure you're reasonably in shape. Cons, sometimes you work 11 hours a day, six days a week, man, that's rough. And sometimes you work eight hours a day for five days, depending on their plan and supplies. Like, oh, here we go again. A sorcerer in Seattle. I'm hoping that this is a technical a talent acquisition sorcerer. Let's go. But two out of five. Managers aren't really managers. World-class company, top tier benefits. You can't deny that. A lot of people know about Tesla. But let's see here, hard to expand your career outside of talent acquisition. What does that mean? Like the person possibly wants to pivot outside of TA or they want to do more within the people function. And I'm assuming it's more likely that they're referring to the latter. Uh, if that's the case, that's kind of sad because then, you know, I guess, what can you look for or look up to if you're in a sorcerer or you're on the talent team? Maybe you become a senior sorcerer, or a lead sorcerer, or a manager sorcerer, and that's it. Ultimately decided to leave so I could develop in other HR areas. So again, this is what I alluded to, like they're just singly focused on sourcing, and that seems to be like the only career track that they have at Tesla moving forward. The management sourcing is inexperienced and can't solve issues or implement processes. They are more of individual contributors with manager titles. Uh, this is what I also see with a lot of companies that are small but large that have gone through rapid or undergoing through rapid growth. A lot of times, the titles in tech are very fluid. And I think for a lot of people, sometimes managers of some companies mean managers at completely different companies. But in tech specifically, you know, you assume there's a certain level of management that comes with a job that's called managers. But I see a lot of times in big and small companies that people who are called managers, sometimes directors, are really just doing like a senior level IC roles. And you can agree or disagree. And I know that can get a lot of people confused, including me sometimes, but it's, I guess it's something that's also still happening at a company like Tesla where you know people who are called managers or people who are in charge of you know leading a function is still doing a lot of IC roles work themselves now some managers like to do that but a lot of people who become managers don't want to do that um, so in this case, this person did not like that experience. Constant chaos, very unorganized, acts like a startup with 100,000 employees, not sustainable, burnout culture. So Tesla is going through growth after growth after growth. We've read enough reviews to see a lot of people complaining about lack of in in being incentivized, lack of comp, micromanage, stress, long hours, no limited growth. These are things that you don't wanna hear over and over and over and over again. I think that wraps up about this part of reviews what do you guys think it seems like on the first page under most recent more of the reviews that we've read are on the negative side while there's a handful on the positive side but again you want to take a lot of these with a grain of salt but it's still really helpful to hear from a lot of people across a lot of different di divisions and a lot of different department functions on their honest opinion now with that said let's also see what some people's interview experiences have been at tesla so you click at interviews here and then let's sort by most recent. Let's just kind of go through some of them. Internship experience, so this person did not get an offer. I applied online, process took 
three weeks, I interviewed at Tesla Power Alto, two-step hiring process, first one with an engineer, and second with a manager. Both interviews are held online. Questions about personal life, questions about previous, basic technical questions. So internship, this is very, very straightforward. Three weeks, not that long. You got two online interviews, one engineer, one manager, and a couple basic questions that you can just find online or something that you've been asked before if you obviously have an experienced career. Now let's, oh, another internship interview. They did not get an offer here. It's average interview experience. It took two months, three interviews. Only one out of the three were professional. The other seemed to be in a rush, were late, didn't know how to communicate well. It took the recruiter six weeks to get back to me after the last one. You wanna make sure if you're an internal recruiter or at a company that your interview experience is as positive as can be because whether or not someone joins you, if even if someone gets rejected, you want them to walk away being like, wow, like well, interviewing a Tesla was a really positive experience because if it was positive for them, the chance of them referring or talking about with their friends and family to then like snowballing to word of mouth marketing for your job, for your company to, to drive more traffic to the job page, to help drive you scaling and hiring more people, like that costs $0 for you. So the fact that like two of, of these interviews were unprofessional, they were late, they were in a rush, they didn't seem like they're having a good time, and, and then it took the recruiter six weeks to get back. Like, that's a big no-no. I think it's really, really important, especially at a high-profile company like Tesla, to make a better effort to have uh, a better experience than everyone else. An analyst, no offer, positive experience, diff difficult interview. I applied online, two, two weeks, I interviewed at Tesla in California. It was a multi-day, extremely specific interview, multiple interviewers, peers talking to you. Overall, experience was not as bad as any big company. I believe in general, the interview process is exactly the same despite the positions that you're attempting to get. So overall, this person, pretty good, pretty pretty decent, average experience. One of the interview questions is what is your biggest weakness? Pretty standard. All right, this person interviewed for a senior program manager role. Average interview, negative experience, no offer. I applied online. The interview process was very disorganized from the beginning, not good. Engineers. Uh, declined the offer, negative experience, average interview, took two weeks. The interview process was very long and tedious. Their policies for being one minute late was not nice. I don't recommend anyone who works here. So uh, this kind of rubs me the wrong way because I see so many companies who are giving a double-edged sword or high-level expectations of candidates, whereas they're okay coming to interviews late. So if you know what I'm talking about, if you experience this, please comment down below. Have you ever interviewed a company, you came on time, but you had to wait five, 10 minutes for the interview? That to me is not right. I think if you're gonna expect someone to to be on time, might as well be on time yourself as well. Good practice, win-win for everybody. Interview questions, what prompted you to apply for this position? Mm, pretty easy. Advisor, no offer, positive experience, difficult interview. I applied in person, the process took two months, smooth and easy, even though I received negative results, whole process was easy, I was well informed by human resources. It took two months, but it was well organized and I do not remember a moment without answers on time. Two months, still fairly long of a process, not ideal, but overall, at least this person had a positive experience. Firmware engineer, no offer, negative experience, average interview. After interview, there was no feedback, Prepper, you always wanna provide feedback as much as possible because then the candidate can use that feedback to better themselves, to do better for future interviews. If they don't get any feedback, they don't know where and how they went wrong, and it provides them with no value even though they spent so much time interviewing for you as a company. The least you can do, provide feedback. Even after sending emails to the organizer, there is no reply. Wow, so even after they actually send an email, they got nothing, not good. As if the email went to nowhere. It is perfectly okay to reject applicants, but without any information, seems not a right thing to do. I agree. Test interview, no offer, positive experience, difficult interview. Technical phone screen followed by a closed book 90 minutes take home exam, which included mechanical engineering and electrical engineering section, followed by two more technical Zoom calls with other members of the team I was interviewing for. So this overall is four stages, including the 90 minute exam. That my 90 minute exam, you gotta love it, you gotta hate it. Some people are okay with it, a lot of people aren't. I feel like that's kind of on the threshold of acceptable. I think if you're gonna ask someone to do a lot more throughout the interview process, then there's a whole discussion like, do you deserve to be paid for it or compensated for it? Or is 90 minutes just absolutely ridiculous and ludicrous? You should not be asking any candidates to do that. I personally believe 90 minutes is a little bit on the longer side, I think. But again, it really depends on the role, your technical background, and what they're testing for. I've seen everything from an hour to, you know, four to six hours over the course of a week. So I think it really depends on the person. But I think that if, 
more and more companies are asking candidates to do more and more work in the interview process, it's gonna come up to a point in time where a tipping point will be reached where a candidate will be like, I don't wanna do this or I'm gonna actually put this interview process on the back burner because I'm interviewing with five other companies who are asking me to do nothing. And that is something that actually I can say confidently I've seen and I've continued to see that even though the company might be high profile, a candidate will rank you lower in terms of interest because either your process is much longer or you're asking the candidate to do way more than he or she, what he or she wanted and then they're just gonna prioritize other companies on top of that. Interview at Tesla overall, we see 56% positive, 24% negative, 20% neutral. So out of about 2,000 interviews here, 56% positive, so a little over half, which is pretty solid. Um, most of them actually got it online with 20% ooh, coming from a recruiter, and, but that could easily mean internal recruiter or external recruiter. Despite the increase of recruiters like us, external recruiters, them scaling their internal recruiting team, over 50% still are still applying through job boards which makes it obvious how important job boards are actually are in this day and age. So Tesla, if you're reading this, make better effort in your job boards so that people who are not even familiar with you can come on, understand what you're all about, get excited about your vision, really provide more granular details about the benefits and, and the mission and you know the employee diversity programs that you have so that people can walk away and be like, wow, I understand everything or a lot of it so that I can make a logical decision to apply. And in terms of difficulty, people rank at 2.9 average, so not the most difficult process. Last but not least, you can't talk about salary, you can't talk about interviews unless you can talk about benefits. So on the whole, from the Tesla benefits page, out of 850 ratings, people are giving it four four out of five, which is pretty solid. If you scroll down here, 4.3 out of health insurance, 4.6 out of life insurance, 4.5 out of disability insurance, you got occupational accident insurance 5.0, you got dent solid dental, you got solid vision, you got okay HSA, you got okay FSA, maybe they can kind of um, improve that. Pretty good supplemental life, pretty decent accidental death and dismemberment, and really good, well according to one rating, retiree health and medical. So let's just quickly see what people say. Health insurance, 401k benefits, pay time off, great. 4.0, health insurance, bonuses, make the jobs worth it, great. Benefits, add, fantastic and free, great. Health insurance is very good, 5.0. Options for free healthcare benefits, really save a lot of money, great. You really get every benefit imaginable, hallelujah. 5.0. Health insurance was the best I've ever had. Very nice company to have a job. Great benefits and overall, oh, one negative. All the packages are good, but not good enough apparently. So I think on the whole, uh, Tesla seems to be doing pretty well in terms of benefits. So guys, that's it for our deep dive in Tesla. So if you are uh, thinking about applying, you're a fan of Elon Musk and you wanna apply, what do you think from what you've seen from their job page and what you've seen from people who are actually are working there and who, who have worked there? Has this changed your mind? Do you actually want to apply or have you applied to Tesla? Do you have your own story that you want to share? And if you do, please comment down below. We'd love to hear your thoughts. But overall, starting from the job page, I honestly wasn't that enthused or impressed by it. We really gave it a 5.7 generous rating when in fact I probably would have given it a two or three out of seven. In terms of overview here on the Glassdoor, we got a mixed bag. We Even though uh, Glassdoor says that majority of the reviews that they're getting are on the positive side, most of the recent ones, and again, we've only read a handful of them are a little bit more on the neutral to negative side. Uh, we're seeing a lot of like themes of, of overworking and stressed, and micromanaging, limited growth opportunities, and underpaid when it comes to like short-term cash and long-term incentives. So maybe that's, I don't know, maybe that's something that's happening there. Again, we've also heard from a lot of people from a lot of different types of roles, um, not focused on certain types of roles as well. Again, when it comes to just interviews, it seems like most people have a pretty interesting or positive experience interviewing with Tesla. A lot of the questions seem to be pretty average while majority of the people uh, have a positive experience and majority of people, interesting enough, are still applying online through the webpage. And when you uh, quickly look at the benefits, like a lot of them seem to say really, really good things. All I wished was for a greater, more in-depth breakdown of their benefits. And like, if do you do matching? Like what kind of matching? And how, how many days off do they actually have when it comes to vacation or PTO and things like that? But I think for surface level, they were given a 4.0 rating out of 850 ratings, which is obviously pretty, pretty good. So I think it's 
really, really important to analyze a company by what marketing that they're actually controlling or putting out, most likely for their job page, and doing your research and using sites like Glassdoor to see what people are actually uh, experiencing themselves and whether or not the two are aligned. So again, we'd love to have your thoughts. If you're a current Tesla employee, we'd love to have your thoughts on the benefits and, and your interview experience and how uh, you like or maybe how you hate the job. But if you're thinking about applying or, you're, or you applied or you're Elon Musk fan, you're applying to every single Elon Musk company, let me know what you think. If you want to apply or you don't want to apply, comment down below. We'd love to hear your thoughts. But either way, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned a thing or two. Really enjoyed making it. If you want to see more videos like this, please consider like, subscribe, click that bell. Feel free to also follow your press underscore park as I try my best to also post daily. But thanks again, and we'll see you on the next one.